Anyone who's ever picked up the hobby of a trading card game knows that the collection eventually gets out of control. It's not just the cards we're talking about here, we're talking about the accessories, the sleeves, oh god, the sleeves, collectibles, bulk, and everything. Let me guess, at one point you dumped everything into a shoebox, am I right? Finding a specific card is like taking on an MMO quest to hunt down a thousand slimes for one rare drop. And also in that dump, there's probably hidden gems in there that secretly rose in demand, but you'll never find it because you never cared X years ago and probably traded it to a vendor as a part of your box on pennies on the dollar. But that ends today. In this video, I will show you guys everything. I'll show you guys how I turned my bulk into my library from my equipment, my sorting strategies, and basically all the reasoning behind it. Welcome to the Tuber Card Collection. Everyone begins their card collecting hobby with something small. A couple of loose packs, a single here and there, a structure deck, or maybe three structure decks. But eventually, that's not enough. You go from a couple of packs to a bunch of packs, to half a box, a full box, to boxes, and to eventually cases. Everyone fits on that spectrum. As for me, I currently fit around here somewhere, buying boxes from time to time. Sometimes I get full cases because I know I can make a return on it and the stuff is just really good. And other times I'm just buying singles because that set's just not my cup of tea and I'm not gambling away my money opening boxes just for one or two cards. Where do you guys fit on this chart? With that many packs over the years, comes with a lot of bulk. Bulk? essentially are just commons under 25 cents. Bulk grows nine to 10 times faster than any useful cards, and that's just a fact. So what do people do? What do I do? You guys have seen me open set after set, and I give you guys the satisfaction of watching everything get speed sorted into an alphanumeric system. But what happens after that? Now, if you guys were like the old me, chances are you would just take all of the good cards out and dump everything else into a four row box, call it a day, and just never sort it ever again. Well, either that or you're procrastinating, you keep telling yourself you'll do it, but not now, just later. And you repeat this cycle 20 times until someone tells you, like, Obscure old card is now worth $20 each now. You think you have, like, 20 copies of it, but it's, like, buried under, like, that giant mess of yours that you call a collection. Besides the stuff I shot for the B-roll of this video, my collection is actually, in fact, fully organized, and I have quick and easy access over everything in my bulk inventory. But why do I even bother? The benefits are simple, money and time. You save money by not buying anything that you already have or only buying the things that you specifically need. Second thing is, if you're looking for something, you know exactly where it is so you can have more time doing something else. For my common bulk collection, this is what I currently use. I have a ton of four row boxes. You guys can use five row boxes instead if that's what you guys have access to, but ultimately buy these ones as you need them. I also have a bunch of single row boxes to separate different categories of cards. And speaking of splitting them apart, I even have some cards that go specifically into binders and I have a bunch of categorized color coded binders for that reason. Also to fill into those binders, I have just multiple packs of those three by three sheets so that I can put cards in there. And I have a ton of penny sleeves. The value of these penny sleeves will keep the value of your cards and I have labels and dividers so that I can at a glance know exactly what I am looking at. And speaking of box dividers, if you guys want to pick up the box dividers featured in this video, you guys can by check out mstmerch.com. I designed these myself to be something that I would want to use personally, so I did make them a one size fit all solution where you can use them both vertically and you can also feature them horizontally to fit in whichever type of box that you are using. So, and it also comes in these three colors, three times over A to Z and extra bonus numbers of one to nine in blue. And uh, that's all you really need. These guys are large to stand out and stick out from your collection to really divide up the job. And yeah, that's all I really have to say about these guys. If you guys want to pick it up, that's up to you. Enough of a self plug, let's continue. The first mistake that a lot of people make when sorting their collection is that they sort it by set releases, which is a big problem due to one word, reprints. You're going to be looking in two different places for the exact same card, which is a waste of time and nobody's got time for that. And secondly, that's something that the stores prefer to do because they will pay their staff to maintain the collection and is better for their catalog. Now for my home collection, when it comes to the major categories of the main deck cards, you know, monster spells and traps, after I split them into those card frame categories, 
seriously just go alphanumeric all the way through because any subcategorization of type, attribute, attack points, stuff like that, it's really pointless. You're splitting hairs and if you do that, uh, you're still going to need to alphabetize them and index them in some form or way. And you don't want to index your entire collection five times, six times over just because you decided to split hairs on how you want to sort stuff. So that, that should be simple enough for you guys. Inside these boxes, I try to keep a playset of every card that I encounter, plus one. The plus one is for indexing inside the box so I can keep everything alphabetically placed. And as for the other three copies, they are for use. If it's a card that requires a playset to be useful in the deck, then I'll try to keep maybe an upwards of nine copies. Uh, if anything else, if it's a staple, I'll try to keep as many copies as I can. And each of these cards are packeted together with a penny sleeve. Penny sleeves are invaluable tools when it comes to maintaining your own collection. If you're going to give it back to a store, then I would not recommend penny sleeving anything if you're just going to be selling your bulk back to a store. But if it's for your own collection, the penny sleeves will keep your cards grouped together so it's easy to flip through. And secondly, it's going to protect your cards from getting the inevitable damage on whitening on the edges from sliding around in the cardboard box. The cardboard box is rough and it will scrape the edge of your cards and that's edge wear. And you guys already know that if you send a card to get graded, the edge wear is the whitening and the whitening reduces the value of your card. And you wanna keep your cards in tip top shape, then penny sleeve everything, wrap it all up. Now some of you out there are probably thinking, oh, I sort my collection with all the levels and the attributes and the attack points and all that fun stuff. And to that I say, when I am looking for a card, am I looking for a card with a specific name first or am I looking for all the attributes? Because 90% of the time people are going to ask you, hey, do you got the Dark Magician? All right, I'm looking for a Dark Magician. You got a Dark Magician? Honestly, people don't want to play Reverse Jeopardy when they're really just looking for a card. I'll take card for 800. Uh, a level three Dark Fiend with 1,000 attack. Tombox? What is Sangan? Mm, wrong. Nim Nim. What is a Dark Mimic level three? That's pretty obvious. Come on, Tombox. You can do better than that. It was friggin' obvious, Tombox! For spells and traps, I ignore the icons and I just sort them alphanumerically all the way through because I don't want to look through an entire set of cards only to remember that, oh yeah, that card was actually continuous and be bamboozled by my own system. So keeping it simple by removing additional parameters is what I'd like to work with. So while editing this video, I noticed I didn't talk about vanillas and oh, what about pendulum, Tom? Okay, so for vanillas, separate that crap out. You don't want to be filtering through a bunch of vanillas while you are looking for effect monsters. It's just noise and you don't need any more noise coming from your boxes. And if you're going to be looking for vanilla, you're looking for what? A gamma, a sunvine, dark magician, blue eyes. Outside of those guys, you're not going to be going in through your vanilla bulk be like, yeah, man, I'm looking for that uh, Tyhone number two or something. I don't know. You're just, you're just not going to be that guy. And as for pendulums, again, I stand by the rule. Effect monsters, normal monsters. Those are the two categories. They're going into those boxes. They don't need their own box. Then what about extra deck cards? The logic behind that one is a little bit more complex. The levels, the ranks, the ratings actually matter now. And for a monster with a very specific summoning requirement to be met, other monsters with the exact same requirements can also be summoned as well. So they're also on the table for you to put into your extra deck and that's just how it works. So for most of the extra deck options, I put them all foil or not foil into their appropriately colored binder based off of their card frame. Because people just tend to like to browse for additional text for that and I do that sometimes as well. And it really just opens up the creativity just in case I forgot about certain options that I have. But honestly, you don't have to. I just like to take the extra step. So what do you do with all the extra cards not in the bulk collection? So you split them into foil and non-foil and you put them into their own individual four row box and try to fill it up as much as you can and ship them back into the stores because the stores will take them back. And why foil versus non-foil? It's just because how stores want them. To some stores, they might give you a little bit more if you sort the entire thing and ultimately the staff spends less time categorizing your bulk and they're nice about it. You might probably have to show the owner that you did it, otherwise they're gonna have full doubts about it and some stores well they don't really care so to those stores just dump it make a huge mess 
let them figure it out because you're not getting anything extra and they can pay their staff a little bit more on sorting your categorized bulk. And if you really want them to waste a lot of time looking through your stuff, make sure you flip one card forward, one card back all the way through so it takes like twice as long to go through your, your bulk. And uh, just if they ask you about it, just pretend you don't know what they're talking about. So that way the other guy gets to work longer just sorting bulk and um, yeah, you, you can be lazy too. Well, that would be it for the bulk sorting. That was just for the stuff that's under 25 cents. But sometimes they do rise back up in price and it's nice to find them very quickly in your own collection in a nice and neat fashion. So what about the collection binder? Well, if you got some high value collectibles, there's no right way of how you would actually put it together, but there are tons of wrong way which could completely devalue your cards. Stuff that you wanna avoid. Maybe we'll talk about that in a future episode of YugiTuber Collection. As for other things too, we still have our accessories, we have the sleeves, oh god, the sleeves. But yes, there's tons more. And special shout outs to Team APS's Paul and Nimnim Nim for joining me on that Jeopardy bit. And if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button if you guys want to see more stuff like this on MST.TV. This is a, a time to time I'll make a video like this. It will hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. And that's all I got for this video, guys. And have a wonderful day.